Hi, this is Allison Villars with In The Loop. I'm with the Department of Health and Human Services at St. Tammany Parish Government. We're glad to have you back. Today we have a treat. We have Sandy Matthews, who is the director of the um, WIC program here, and Sandy's gonna give you all kinds of information that's really helpful to you or people you know who might need that service. But before we get into WIC, I'm gonna ask Sandy a couple of questions. Thanks for joining us, Sandy. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so Sandy. My big question is, how did you get to where you are today career-wise? I know you've had a long and illustrious career, but step us through how you decided to do this kind of meaningful work. Well, since I'm getting ready to retire without <laughs> saying my age, it has been a long journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll, I'll start where I started on the North Shore. I became employed by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. Um, almost 30 years now. Mm -hmm. I started as a secretary in human resources and I, I do remember one of my first jobs they said if you started in human resources you got to learn the, everything about that organization and I did. I had that opportunity. I also worked with the medical staff. I worked with administration mm -hmm. and then at the age of 55 I decided to take some of the college courses that I had just been playing with and, and go for it and I graduated from SLU at, at 55. Uh -huh. So I'm really proud of that. Uh, it's never too late to get your degree and to advance. At that point I did. I got promoted. I got promoted to department head at the Community Wellness Center. <clears throat> So that was my, my journey. Oh. Okay, so you said the magic words, Community Wellness Center. So before we get into WIC specifics, tell me what the Community Wellness Center and where it is located. The Community Wellness Center, it is an off-site facility of the St. Tammany Parish Hospital. It was, it's located at 1505 North Florida Street. Um, I hate to use the landmark, but it's right behind Zoe's Bakery. <laughs> <laughs> and, and right by the fairground. Um, it's, it got started when the health clinic uh, closed down a uh, long time ago and instead of not having those services for the community, the parish owns and operated the building that we're in. Uh, the services are contracted by the Department of Health uh, and Hospitals and that those services are WIC and also vaccines for children. And then the hospital uh, provides the employees. Uh, all the employees currently are employees of St. Tammany Parish Hospital. Okay, so, so talk to us about WIC. I've been saying WIC a lot because I wanted you to define what WIC is. WIC is a USDA food supplement program and it's for women, infant, and children. Uh, women, it could be a pregnant um, woman, postpartum, breastfeeding mom, uh, infants up to age one, and then children from age one to five years of age. Okay, and so that program runs through St. Tammany Parish, because of St. Tammany Parish Hospital, but it's funded by? Uh, Department of Health and Hospitals. Okay, and so can you talk to us about, if somebody decides that they don't know if they're eligible for WIC or if their child is eligible for WIC, how would they find out? They need to call and set up an appointment, and that, that number is 871-6030. I like to give that number. Uh, sometimes you, you do get a recording and you have to leave your name, but we do return all of the phone calls within a 24-hour period, so uh, be patient. We will definitely make that phone call to you. At that point, you need to make an appointment and come in. We'll let you know uh, what you need to bring. You have to uh, show proof of income. You have to be a resident. You have to show proof of income and proof of residency. So there's all different type of uh, documents that could qualify uh, for those guidelines. So we'll walk you through it when you call and, and let you know what you need to bring in. And then when you come in, we'll actually um, assess everything that you bring in and see if you meet the, um, the income guidelines. Okay. okay, so there are income guidelines for this service. Yes. yes. So if your household makes more than a certain amount, you might not be eligible for this. That is correct, and, and one important thing to let people know is that it's not just your income, uh, it's also anybody that's living in your household. Uh, it's it's all, of, all of those people's income. You have to bring in documentation to show for everybody. Okay. okay, so if I was a woman who had just had a baby or was going to have a baby or was breastfeeding a baby, what services are available to me? 
Well, to start off with, if you're pregnant, we'll start way in the beginning. Okay. Oh, in if the you're beginning. pregnant, uh, they do teach you about um, prenatal nutrition. They start with that. Um, your your WIC CPAs, it's, it's broken up into registration and uh, the WIC CPA. So they'll teach you mainly about nutrition, um, how to eat healthy. And one of the things that we do promote it for our pregnant moms is my plate. Mm -hmm. And it tells you exactly uh, what a mom should eat, the portion sizes, mm -hmm. um, whether um, the quantity, the protein, uh, all the different things that are really good for you, and how not to overeat. Uh, what you know, what things you could substitute if you are somebody that likes to drink uh, soft drinks. They want to wean you off of those soft drinks, but you can take and drink uh, infused water. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take and put different types of fruit in water to give you that flavor that you're looking for. So they give you alternatives for things that might be causing you a problem. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, an acronym, CPA. What does that stand for? Oh, it's a certified uh, public authority, which really confuses people. But it, what, what it is in our clinic, it's somebody that has a minimum of 15 hours, 15 college hours of nutrition. Okay. okay. And those are the people who are guiding and helping. Yes. Right and in, uh, in our clinic, we, it's, everybody that's doing it has more education than that because we have LPNs. We have three LPNs and we have two RNs and we have somebody that's a nutritionist and then we also have a registered dietitian. They're getting fantastic help when they come to see you. Yeah. Okay. If you have um, babies that are high risk, the registered dietitian does uh, work with you one on one, and helps you to uh, to know what things, what type of formula the baby can have. That special formula, mm -hmm. and she'll work with you. Mm -hmm. So that's when the baby's born. Yes. And what kind of um, services does that baby and mom get right after birth? Right after we do, we encourage breastfeeding. Uh, and we do have a high breastfeeding uh, rate for Region 9. This is one of the things that we, we do give to the moms. It's a breastfeeding pack. It has uh, a thing that you can clip somewhere that you can always re you know reference it. It has some really good tips on breastfeeding. Uh, we also have, and this is provided by the Department of Health and Hospitals. They provide your food instruments for you to actually shop for the food, but they, they give you numerous uh, things that you can reference for education. So this is a book on uh, baby basics and mm -hmm. also on, on the breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. uh, with the breastfeeding, we do breastfeeding classes once per month. Uh, once a month we do breastfeeding classes. We also do um, a breastfeeding support group. We do drop-in Fridays where if a mom, a new mom that's uh, breastfeeding and she's having difficulty, and we, we don't just do this for the WIC uh, population, we do it for the community at large. Um, we feel very strongly about breastfeeding, so we want to offer it to the community. At this time it is free of charge. Uh, moms can drop in on a Friday, any Friday at one o'clock, and she uh, will be able to meet with a certified lactation specialist. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So this is given to every breastfeeding mom that you guys work with? Yes. Okay, that's great. We do pump, uh, breastfeeding pumps, uh, and I know that is really important to a lot of moms. The first month, um, the first month they don't encourage pumping because they want your uh, milk supply to come in, but after that first month, uh, and sometimes if you need it before, if there's uh, other circumstances, we do have a personal pump for the mom. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So what services does the baby get besides getting good nutrition from the mom? Well, the baby will get checked when the baby comes in, it will get checked for the height and weight to make sure that it's growing and it's on the, uh, the chart the way it's supposed to be. Um, sometimes we'll have babies that are at risk and like I said, we, the registered dietitian will meet with that mom to make sure that that baby is getting the appropriate uh, nour nourishment, whether it's breast milk or formula. Mm -hmm. um, if the baby's having problems uh, in so far as being, not being able to keep the formula down, they'll recommend a special formula and that will have to go through the pediatrician uh, through a prescription. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm trying to think what else. So what about those one to five-year-olds? Let me back up. I'm, okay. I'm, I knew that was one of the things. I'll, I'll back up with the formula. Uh, it's a, a food supplement program. However, you do get a lot. You get 10 cans of formula per month. Um, at the, when a baby turns six months, 
it'll drop from 10 cans of formula to 7 cans of formula and the baby will start getting um, baby food, fruits and vegetables, the jarred fruit and vegetables, which is 32 jars, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it'll go to 7 uh, cans of formula and they'll, uh, the baby will also get cereal. So that's a, a substantial amount of food for the baby. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at the cost on formula, the cheapest thing to do is breastfeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if not, um, our, our volume for moms that are using formula, that's one of our highest volumes mm -hmm. because of the, the expense of the formula. Mm -hmm. It is really expensive. Yes. So that's nice of you guys to do and the state to provide. Yes. So we're very lucky. So tell us about the other um, things that you guys do in terms of um, assisting people with education at WIC. Besides the food and the lactation benefits that people can learn from and the formula people get, what else do you guys do? The state requires that you provide specific educational topics. They give you the topic and they change it bi-monthly. Um, example of some of the, the topics is dental health. Uh, with dental health, you'll, you know, you'll teach that before the baby has teeth, you're gonna, after the baby has a bottle, you'll take a warm a uh, wet rag and you'll wipe the inside of the baby's mouth uh, after each bottle. Once the baby has teeth, you'll take a soft toothbrush and warm water again, no toothpaste, and then you'll always encourage them to see a dentist at age one. From that point on, we start teaching the moms to be a role model, uh, not just the mom, the whole family. Uh, and we do have a lot of dads that come in, and uh, I, I like to talk with the dads because I'll, I'll ask them, what, what is one healthy thing that you do for your family? And um, some of the things that they come up with, I, I'll share one, and I, I hope it'll be okay if I share this one, but the one dad told me that he was really um, excited because he had made a homemade ice cream out of breast milk. And I said, really, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. And he put it in a baggie with a vanilla bean, uh, put that in another bag with crushed ice, shook it, and he said it made the best homemade ice cream. Um, I don't know if he ate that or if the baby ate it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you like to get the dads engaged and learn, learn what, what they're doing. But you also want to encourage the whole family to eat healthy mm -hmm. and to be role models. Uh, kids pick up on what you're doing from a very, very young age. Um, mm -hmm. So we ask them to please not to eat the cookies and not to eat the potato chips in, in front of uh, the children. Okay. So educational topics, dental is one, helping dads when they come in and getting them engaged. Other topics that you can remember? Um, shopping, shopping at the grocery, sh grocery store. One of the things that they teach is all the things that you need at the grocery store, you can just shop the outer perimeter. If you start going down all the middle aisles, you, you are, you're getting the cookies, the potato chips, the things that you don't need. Um, we do grocery store tours. Um, so we, we get additional funds. A lot of times we'll get grants, um, cooking matters at the store. Uh, that particular grant allowed us to go into the grocery stores and actually do tours with the WIC participants. And they provided the WIC participants with um, $10 coupons to add to their grocery bill. Um, they taught them how to, to shop in, you know, if, if your fruit is in season, fruit shop in mm -hmm. season, look at your, not, your net price. Uh, mm -hmm. That's really important because you don't look at the net price. You could get to, up to the cash register and end up paying $7 for a package of grapes. Of course. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know to look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, they also taught them how to look at food labels. Food labels are very important. Sometimes you will look at yogurt and it'll say non-fat and you think that's that's a healthy choice. But once you take and you look at the sugar content, uh, most of your yogurt has 13 grams plus of sugar. Um, I know one right off, Chobani has seven. Mm -hmm. So you really, you really need to look at your food labels and understand them mm -hmm. um, before you can really select something that's healthy. So they should let me go on the food tour with y'all. <laughs> you could, yes you could. Well, you know, Sandy, it's been great to have you here. We really appreciate your time and effort and all the service you've um, made to the community with St. Tammany Parish Hospital after all of these years, and particularly your administration and directorship at the WIC program here. So would you say the telephone number for people to call again so they can get it's an appointment? 985-871. 6030. And they can find you at what location? 1505 North Florida. And it's a brick building? It on is a brick building and we share the building with the parenting center. 
However, LSU Ag Center kind of fits the same description, so we are the building that's closest to Lyon Elementary School. Okay, <laughs> that's great. We're really appreciative of you being here. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you for having me. Hey guys, um, we're going to take a break now and come back and you're going to meet the woman who runs the Parenting Center at the same location. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Hi, this is Allison Villars with In The Loop, our second section. And today we have with us Lori Cage, who is the director at the Parenting Center at Saint, for St. Tammany Parish Hospital, located, in the, located at the Wellness Center. Thanks for coming by, Lori. Thank you for having me. Okay. So I always like to start with figuring out how people decided to do the work they're doing. So tell me how you decided to do this work. Well, at, right after high school, I started in school for social work. And then actually my father went bankrupt and then I went to work as an optician. So I made glasses for several years until I could afford to go back to school and got right back into social work and completed my master's. And then I worked at North Shore Psych Hospital. I actually worked on the psychiatric wards and doing assessments and such. And then after I had my son, I shifted gears and applied for a job at the parenting center and I've been there in prevention of child abuse and neglect for 17 years now. And absolutely, it's been a fabulous experience. Well, tell me what the Parenting Center does and who funds this program? Well, we are a department of St. Tammany Parish Hospital, so that is where the bulk of our funding comes from. We do have some grants for certain programs that also help, and then we have one or two, fun well actually now two, we just picked up a new fundraiser, but we do Monster Mash every year in Bogafly Park, which I'm sure people are familiar with, but I don't know that everybody not knows. Not everybody is familiar not with it. Not everybody's so familiar with it, and not everybody knows that it's a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. They just think it's an event in Covington. Mm -hmm. But it's um, a fall festival when kids come with their costumes, and they have games and crafts and food and face painting and all kinds of th fun things to do. And it's on one Saturday mm -hmm. um, it, during the year. So that's where the bulk of our fundraising comes from. And actually this year, we're really excited. This is our 30th anniversary. Oh, so we have a big one. Yeah, so we are trying to um, get something together for all our past chairs and board members and things to kind of brainstorm on what they would like to see and show them where we've come in these 30 years. Because it's been a, a very successful road from where they came from with a table passing out parenting information in the hall at the hospital <laughs> <laughs> so now we have the parenting center where you can come with your children we have lots of um, parents that come and grandparents and caregivers and it's a center where you can come with the children and play nine to one so we offer support and education but it gives you time to um, socialize one-on-one -on -one if you have multiple children and also just to validate some of those parenting. They don't come with instructions and sometimes it's hard. We have a lot of parents that maybe were transient that their husbands or wives were transferred here and they don't know anyone. And so then they come to the parenting center and meet new friends. We have several people that have been friends that now their grandchildren are coming you know, to the parenting center when mm -hmm. they came when they were children. So mm -hmm. it's um, a really um, unique place. Okay, so you started there and you moved there when you had your first child, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. And um, what did you know about parenting before you went to the parenting center? I mean, you're a social worker, yeah. so I understand. But. No, they don't, <laughs> they don't give you those instructions. That's what I said. It was like, you think you would have taken all these child development classes and things like that, but it's a whole different ball game than actual parenting. And I can say I've taken a lot of the classes, the taming the temper, the potty training, the Wait, different things. slow down, taming the temper. Taming the temper. Okay, okay. so if you have a little kid who's throwing themselves on the floor and beating up, you know, the hands up and down, mm -hmm. kicking their feet. Yes. They teach you how to deal with that. Yes, they absolutely do. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know, it was amazing. I think the class, I don't know if I actually just use the skills or my son knew I went to this class. It really worked to, to help with those, you know, frustrations and temper tantrums. And I think sometimes it's just learning the expectations of, of 
that different age group, you know, because they change through the different ages. And I've seen people, you know, in public, they expect their two-year-old to sit at the table and be good little children and not play with whatever they gave them for two hours. And that's just not physically, mentally possible for that child to do. And so it creates a lot of frustration. So some of our classes just kind of tell you about you know, different ways to prevent some of those behaviors you don't want before they happen. And it, it lessens a lot of frustration. So they're teaching you about the developmental stages of, of children as they're growing up. Yes. That's yes. very helpful. Um, so who does your, your, those kinds of programs? Who is the trainer in those programs? Well, we have several trainers. Um, the bulk of our parenting classes is taught by a master level social worker, Renee Ridgely. She's our education coordinator. Um, we also have um, a health education and promotion instructor, Marley Zeshte, uh, Borley, she just got married, Borelli, I keep mispronouncing her name. Um, and then we do have people that come in that are experts if we have a specific talk, topic to talk about that might be a social worker or a psychologist or mm -hmm. a therapist. We're very fortunate in that we have a lot of volunteers that come and help us instruct with our classes. Because some of our classes are very intense. Some, some of the things we do, um, Safe Sitter, for example, it's a babysitting class we mm -hmm. teach for 12-year-olds and up. And it's a two-day course, but they teach CPR and first aid. We have, uh, we are very fortunate 911 comes and helps us with some of that instruction as well. But it's a one to six ratios for instructors. So you have to have a lot of instructors on hand to do that. Mm -hmm. I guess you have a lot of people who want to take it. We do, we feel. <laughs> it is very competitive to get in. And, you know, unfortunately, we can only offer it about five times a year just because of the time constraints and mm -hmm. um, having people sign up and be off of school and, and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, something we just, we just took on also was a cooking healthy options and portions class. So, that's a cooking class for 12 to 16 year olds. And, in fact, I left there to, to come here, and that has been very interesting class because they actually cook, saute, chop, learn nutritional things. We also teach them how to maybe make some substitutions. We start the class off with a taste test of maybe you'll have uh, wheat goldfish and regular goldfish and so which cracker is better and you know can does it really make a difference you know they mm -hmm. uh, started off with drink uh, let's see this this week they ate kale potato chips, which they'd never had before, and mm -hmm. they actually liked them. You know, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do, but um, it's been very a very good class. So that's part of our mission is also health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And I'm right in saying that the coming to the parenting center just to hang out, and meet people, and play with your child, or your you, the if you're a caregiver, the child you're responsible for, and two, mm -hmm. um, that's a free service. Is that correct? It is not free. No. We okay. do operate on a membership. It is $80 a year for the membership mm -hmm. and that you can come 9 to 1 Monday through Friday anytime. We also do some special member only events like Santa Social and um, just different monthly events for members and it also gives you reduced prices on classes. Now our classes to begin with are five ten dollars so it's not astronomical mm -hmm. however you still get a discount if you're a member mm -hmm. but you are correct in a way that we offer scholarships for membership and for classes so okay. no one's ever turned down to be able to come to some of our events even if you know we set we of course, ask if you're on any kind of public assistance, but if, even people that just, you know, I fell on hard times, my husband lost his job, but I really want to take this parenting class or I really need this support, then welcome, come. We'll, we have scholarship money. <coughs> We've, uh, ha is housed with our foundation that raises money and then for specific grants, there are organizations that say, I just want to have this money sitting in the foundation for people that need it. But. So tell me about the rest of the staff that you have there. You talking okay. about the education coordinator. Mm -hmm. So she teaches, like I said, most of our parenting classes. Um, and we have quick classes that are an hour. We have two hour classes and then we have active parenting, which is a series. It's like six weeks. So you really get a lot of um, skills with that one. We also um, have an interactive class facilitator, Carmen. She's does a lot of our activities, but she also does, we do a lot of mommy and me classes that we break up into 
um, age groups. And I, I, I say mommy and me because that's what people are most familiar with, but it's really, it's grandparents, it's dads, anyone comes. But they break them into different age groups and they're offered on different days. And we introduce concepts like colors and bubbles and musical instruments. And they also do a little craft at the end to start working on those fine motor skills. So uh, it also teaches children, it's time to do this, now you put that away. It's time to do this, now you put that away. So you're teaching those kind of skills too. And we have a movement specialist that comes and teaches ballet. So we offer ballet for two years old and up. So it's a fun time. And then we have Karen, who's our office manager, that keeps us all in line with our paperwork and budgets and, and you have kind an, of thing. But you have an outdoors portion of the parenting center. Yes, we do. We have an outdoor play area. Um, we also have a sandbox. I say, I tell everyone, the parenting center is where you come to make a mess that you don't want to have at your house. Sand, glitter, glue, <laughs> things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then in the back, we've started a community garden. Capital One has given us a grant for both our CHOP program, the cooking class, and our community gardens. And we have, we're fortunate enough to partner with LSU Ag Centers, Master Gardeners, and they come and help us to do that, as well as we have a butterfly and herb garden too, that they come and do education with the community. So, and it's well, we welcome anybody in the community to come and learn about those skills. <coughs> I've learned a lot. How did you decide what classes to hold there and for what age groups? Is it based upon the number of people who come through with particular questions or the number of kids who come through at particular ages? I think um, some of the classes over the years have just been staples, potty training, temp tantrums, back talk, ages and stages. <coughs> Other things have been developed because people in the community have called and said, I'm really interested in the subject, I can't find information on it. Our education coordinator also speaks to parents all the time. If you have any kind of question that you want to addressed individually and we even do a mom and dad support chat group on Fridays. It's just open forum that you can come in and, and mm -hmm. talk to her about any issues you may have going on. So that's, we have a class interest list so we also, if sometimes if we're not offering that class right now, like we might do potty training twice a year, but we'll put you on a list when we know the date's coming up, we'll call you mm -hmm. and let you know it's coming. Okay, so is there something that tells them about the parenting center, something they can Yes. Call and ask yes. for? Yes, that's our little quarterly newsletter. This is our May, June, July, and August that we just developed, and um, or that just came out. And it lists everything we do. It has a little cute calendar forum in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, also, you can go to our website, which is www.stph.org, either back or forward slash, either one, Parenting Center. And you can pull up classes and events. We have a Facebook page, and um, our outreach coordinator, Marlise, is phenomenal. She definitely constantly keeps things posted. So if you can go to our Facebook page, you can kind of get a really good picture of some of the fun things we do. We do a lot of fun things, but we also do a lot of serious things. We sneak education in there on you. I can't imagine anything <laughs> y'all do would not be fun, because you're great, Lori. It's really a pleasure to well, talk to you. you. Thank you for joining thank me you here so much today. For having me. So this is In The Loop, Allison Villars with Department of Health and Human Services, and we've just had an engaging conversation with Lori Cage, who's the director of the Parenting Center here in Covington. Thanks.